Praise the Lord and welcome yet to another wonderful time. Even after highly contested electioneering period, and it is time to speak renewed strength by walking truthfully to the grace, peace, and masses from the heavenly throne of grace to every kindly man and woman in our nation. And in times like this, it is good to get concerned even as we cancel our hearts. So our topic today is canceling your heart. It is said, deep calls to the deep when the waterfalls of our hearts are swept away by the storms of life. We have been having storms of life. But which can help you grow in God's all-sufficient grace and truth about our faith. Your faith and life is more important than what is currently revolving around you. And especially when we are grieving loss from which many raises, raises many questions. And while the principle of our action is in our hearts and therefore it is important you let God to manage your heart. Therefore, these psalms start with the lamentation of thirsty hearts. Psalm 42, 1 to 3 says, Even as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my heart pants after you, O God. Verse number 2, my soul that's for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? Verse number three, my tears have become my food day and night, while they continually ask me, where is your God? Verse number four, these things I remember and pour out my soul within me. Now, not following the crowd. Because we have been following the crowds. So after halobalos and noisy excitement with multitudes, you are left alone by yourself. But the summits find his consolation in the principal action of his heart. It is by yourself. Therefore, Psalms 42, verse number 5 and verse number 11 is a continuous and repeatedly connection to this principal action of his heart and an address to an individual heart. Verse 5 says, why are you downcasted, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? But the psalmist stands and says, Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Verse number 11. Why are you so Downcasted, O oh my soul, and why are you in trauma within me? Then he addresses his heart to hope in God, for I shall praise him, my salvation and my God. As the psalmist continue, he repeatedly asks his heart, Why are you downcasted? But each time he answers by reminding him to hope in God, as the one who will store back his favor and fortunes. Are you feeling as if there is a breakdown of your lifeline flow in life? Verses number 11 is a repeat of the same question. He does the same and he pleads 
and justifies his claims by repeating the habit of counseling himself with the spiritual truth as he reminds himself of the faithfulness of God. Again, he instructs himself to hope in God, the only source of his hope. Hallelujah and amen. Let me remind you, or let me remind ourselves that double questions are not doubts, but positive confession from what we are challenged of. <clears throat> Remember, confession brings victory. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Mark 11 and verse number 23, For most certainly, I tell you, whoever may tell this mountain, be taken up and casted into the sea, and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believe that what he says will happen, he shall have whatever he asks. Therefore, positive confession is not denying the circumstances you are going through, but rather you are confessing what God says about the situation, and since God cannot lie, his word shall come to pass. Therefore, a honest cry of soul in anguish helps you find transparent, faithful prayer within yourself. And a true confession of faith is always, it always agrees with the word of God. Therefore, learn to talk God talk. Confession is an expression of what one believes. And Paul says in the book of uh, Philippians, chapter number 4 and verse number 6 and 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Verse number 7, And the peace of God, which pardeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. I think this is the only remedy we can have to ourselves after a tough contest with gains and roses. The thanksgiving comes as an example of a transparent prayer found in the temple in the book of Luke chapter number 18 verses number 9 to 14. This was between the tax collector and the Pharisees who prayed and fasted twice a week. We can remember that story. How the Pharisees was, bust, was boasting about his fasting and his prayer routine. But the tax collector went and knelt down before God with a transparent prayer which helped him find a renewed mind with truth about God. And that's why Jesus poses the question to the disciple who among the two was justified. Is your spirit troubled? Are you downcasted in your soul? Honestly, cry out to God in prayer. Turn your doubts into questions which flow from faith and deliberately have a U-turn away from the message your emotions are speaking to you by replacing them with the unchanging truth of the word of God. The word of God is truly the truth and the light of the gospel, which the Bible says that the God of this age has brightened the mind of many that they may not see the light of the gospel. But I thank God because we live through gains and losses. And even as we continue to renew our minds, may God help us and help each one of us to understand that we are living in previous times. 
times when we cannot predict what will happen but may the sufficient grace of God find a place in your heart and this is by the principal action of your heart and that's why the psalmist found it acceptable to return back to his heart where he can find his consol consolation in the name of the Lord. And he said, a honest cry of a soul in anguish helps you find transparent and faithful prayer. Therefore, we cannot justify ourselves or justify the results of our outcome. But we can always make positive confessions about life so that the sufficient grace of our Lord Jesus Christ may be able to give us the right counsel in the name of the Lord. You know, may you start living beyond the current horizons. The word horizons meaning going beyond your interests. And in the book of First John, chapter number 3 and verse number 20, the Bible says, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Here John reminds us that God is greater than our feelings of guilt and is greater than the mistake we make which leads us to condemnation. Often when we speak about the heart, many people refer to the organ that pumps blood to the body. However, the word heart in the Bible is usually referred to someone's emotions or desires, the center of his will or his true self. And while Jesus was speaking about the heart, he said, out of persons, a person's heart flows sinful and evil desires. So, may you focus back to your heart so that you may be able to have a U-turn and overflow of the goodness of God. The Bible speaks about David. And David sought to do all that God had willed. And it says, when he removed Saul, he raised David up to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. So when John says that God is greater than our hearts, he is telling us that God is greater than our desires, emotions, and wills. And the writer of Hebrew encourages us to draw near to God with a true heart in full assurance of faith, which is plankled with clean conscience and washed by pure water. Therefore, dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Let's not be like the famous Judas Iscariot who was a disciple of Jesus and who betrayed him in exchange for money. 
The Bible says, after Judas found no satisfaction with what he did, Jesus, Judas went to the chief priest and the elders and told them, I have sinned. And he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. But the answer to him, what is that to us? Therefore, when he did not find resolve, Judas condemned himself to death. And we might be blaming Judas for what he did and not. But is this not what we do by throwing our hands? Even as we get rid, tired of issues of life. May God have mercy to each one of us. Even as we turn from grief to raise from the very thing that can suppress the pain of our losses. In the book of Lamentation, three and verses 23 to 22 to 23, the Bible says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His masses never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Jeremiah understood yesterday's promises are good and helpful, but something more is needed to nourish a thriving, a thriving relationship with the Lord. Therefore, your soul also needs new masses from God, which he provides every morning. So it is this way for Jeremiah as he grieved the loss of his city. So may God help us to have a U-turn in our lives, even as we come out of the grieving of our lives and we let the free flow of the living water of God flow back to our hearts in the name of the Lord. Are you, aren't you blessed this morning that you are alive? The Bible says, it is better a living God, a living dog, than a dead lion. Because there is hope for that weakly living dog than a dead lion. May God continue to bless you, even as God blesses Kenya. God bless Kenya. Let's pray, even as we continue to meditate upon his truthfulness, even as we continue to cancel our heart. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning, Lord, I thank you. Because of your great mercies, because of your great love toward humanity, that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you, even as I speak peace by all means. Yes, as the people of this nation, men and women, continue to confess victory upon our nation, that life may be livable in the name of the Lord. Everlasting God, I thank you. Even as I pray, Lord, for the president erect, even as I pray for to his contender, Jehovah God, how I pray for each and every person who casted his vote. Lord Jesus, may you help each and every person individually. Unto those who are hearts are downcasted, Lord, may you lift them back to the status of life where they shall enjoy the flowing living water of God. Yes, Lord, I thank you. Even us, the deep calls to the deep when the waterfalls of our hearts are swept away by the storms of life. I thank you 
and I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Marvelous grace of God.